What the hell? Like, something's dripped through onto the graphics card. Oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Digital video. Hope you enjoyed that intro. But in this episode, we're going to be taking this machine from gross to great. But more on that in a moment. Just thought I'd mention briefly, this is not going to be a video featuring the art card. We're in the process of warranty with Intel, so there'll be more content on this following up next week and when the new card returns. But in the meantime, we need to do some PC maintenance because, ugh, gross. So, let's get into it. I'm definitely a little bit down at the bottom here, but that's not so bad. The filter's working okay. So what the problem is, is that we have cats. And the cats like to sleep on the top. Where this nice piece of mesh is. But it's not enough to keep the crap off their paws. Or kids putting drinks on the top of the machine because... Arg. That's all I can say. Arg. Well, normally in this situation, we would use compressed air and some towels or an electric duster like these options here or we take it outside to the 140 psi compressor and blow the s out of it that's the option so the lighting situation out here not fantastic in the garage now like i said you might want an electric duster or a canned air but i don't have those i do have 150 psi compressor and a blowgun. <laughs> now some of you may have some concerns about this. This is not my first rodeo. I clean computers like this all the time. Ooh wee. One thing you want to make sure though is that you keep fans from spinning. You don't want them, they're basically generators and when they're not powered and you're spinning them. So you just want to make sure it doesn't back feed the computer. Same thing with the blower under the video card. So already you can see there's a lot less gunja on here. That still has to be cleaned. That is concerning. But we're in much better shape. We're going to pull that graphics card out though and we're going to clean that up. That's not right at all. One graphics card extracted. So we've got this pledge multi-surface cleaner. It's actually designed for electronics. Uh, the company I work for actually, uh, we bought this at uh, the local parts store uh, for those of you in Canada, Canadian Tire. Um, also with a 40 pack of uh, microfiber cloths that were disposable, air quotes, disposable. But uh, I've washed them many times and they continue to work perfect. They didn't have a, um, I'll get a video of it, of but there's no sewed edge, so I thought they would disintegrate, but like, they're still perfect, like, years later. So, anyway, this stuff is safe on electronics. Obviously, you let the electronics completely dry before you turn them on. But I'm just putting this on, a, on the back plate. I'm just going to do my best to avoid spraying the capacitors in the center. But that should let me clean this right up.
So now let's turn it around. Well, we'll leave it this way so you can see the orientation. It's all cleaned up, nothing left on top. There is uh, no, uh, no moisture in the center, but we're still gonna let this dry before we turn it on. Sorry about that quick flip, we'll cut that out. Yeah, looks much better. All right, so now I'm gonna go just dust this off now with the rag first, just to make sure all the loose, easy stuff's easy to get out. No reason to use more cleaner than necessary. This all looks good. I take this filter back off because I need to definitely clean the top where the drink was spilt or whatever it was that was spilt in there. So I'm just going to hold it underneath. And give us a little shot here of the cleaner. Now we're ready to start changing the cables. So we're gonna do the 24 pin here first. Like so. Then there's the EPS eight pin here. And we're gonna undo the Velcro strap I put in. I am an advocate of Velcro over zip ties. Okay, those two are free. And then we just need the GPU power cables. Those guys are coming in from underneath, I believe. Yes, they are. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna have to undo a lot of cables to get to them, I think. Also. If everything is tied up, these are all the spare, there wasn't a modular power supply. So I tied up all the cables just to keep it clean. As clean as possible because there's not a lot of space to work in here. This is a TD500 uh, from Cooler Master. I love the case, it's great. There we go, here come the power supply cables for the GPU. Just like that. Each is on its own 8 pen. One cable removed. Two cables removed. All right, let's get our new cable kit out. An AliExpress special. Uh, so these were bought individually, the cable combs. They were not very much. I'll pop the prices on the, um, the video here. And then the cables themselves are around $15 Canadian. So again, pretty reasonable. That's like $11 US, I think. But I'll put all the pricing up and uh, the links to where I bought them. So the cable combs are deep enough that they actually hold two wires per section. So you stick it on here and you go one wire in, two wires in. And then that's how it keeps all the cables lined up. So they don't take too long to assemble. You can pretty much just push the wire right through and once you get a few in, it just starts going on. Pretty quick. <laughs> you can almost actually tell if it goes on too easily, either the paracord over the wire is really thin or the gauge of the wire is too thin. So as long as it gives you a little bit of resistance going through the cable comb, you're usually in good shape. I've only had one set of extensions that was really crap. Now look how nice that cable starts to look after you've started training the cable a little bit. Beautiful, right? Much better than the end of that ketchup and mustard mess. So that's, these cables work with anything. You don't have to buy them for a specific power supply. They are a universal straight through because they aren't plugging into the power supply directly. They're just plugging into the 
existing cable. So all of the wiring and pinouts are already correct and it's just passing that through exactly the same way when it gets to the other end. Who's that cameraman? He's awful. So cable comb comes through. Now it bends around and plugs into the power connector. Just like so. Make sure you clip it in nice and tight. It's hard to do without a second hand here. There we go, it's all the way in. So I wonder if the more observant of you have noticed, because I didn't until I was doing this, that I have an eight pin and a six pin PCIe cable, but I have a Vega 56 card. So it takes two eights. And then you might say to yourself, well, you do on the back of the computer have a ZPS eight pin. Why don't you use that? Well, you can't actually do that the EPS 8 pin is uh, not a different pin out per se, but, well, I mean it is, but again, straight through cable, so it doesn't matter. But the actual ends of the cables uh, are have this triangular cutout or a square cutout, and the EPS is in a different pattern than the PCI Express one, so the cable can only be used for this purpose. Uh, again, because normally I'd say you can't really see the EPS at the top of the case, so I would have swapped it, but uh, that's not an option, unfortunately. So, we are going to use the six pin on the graphics card. It should still work. The extra two pins are just grounds. And we'll use it on the secondary uh, power connector on the GPU. So, in theory, it'll still be fine. But it's not what I would recommend. I'm going to have to check the listing, though, because I could have sworn I got a set that had two eight pins plus the EPS. Not an eight pin plus a six pin plus an EPS. But it's entirely possible I screwed that up. Well, hello there, Mr. 8-Pin. Nice to see ya. Ah, Mr. 6-Pin, how are you? Let's put our graphics card in the machine here. Locked in. So, the 8-Pin. Click. Six pin. Nothing to see here. So far, not looking too bad. Just got to take care of this guy. So now we're going to just take off the old cooler. We're going to just turn it with the slot screwdriver here. Oh, that paste looks pretty dried out anyway. Could definitely be better. Let's see now, the paste was dried out there. I was making okay contact for a crappy Intel stock cooler. And at least it was the one that had the copper slug. I think I expected it specifically. But let's get our new cooler in there. This goes together very similar to a Cooler Master setup. So you've got pins in the back of the back plate, and then it just goes through the factory holes. I already had this cooler installed uh, when we were doing cooler testing. So all the parts aren't in the box, but I've got them all here. So now we just screw these on. a little bit. Beauty, all nice and clean. So now we're just going to go ahead and apply the thermal paste. Good old X pattern. I used to do just the bean in the middle, but occasionally it just wouldn't spread out. Well, I mean, chances are that's due to the fact that it wasn't quite There we go. 
Ooh, pasty. All right, time to put the cooler on. So the cooler just slides right on to the posts. Like so. Let's screw onto these posts. Like so. So now we just tighten in a hat pattern or a cross pattern. So top left first. Don't get it too tight. You want to snug it up first. Then you do the bottom right. Then top right. And then bottom left. All right. Now tell me that that's not look considerably better than it did before. Beautiful. Well, we have gone from gross to great, no doubt. This looks so much better. The cooler's installed, everything's running. The machine is fantastic. It may be on some older hardware, but it's gonna serve its purpose just fine as a Zoom meeting machine and backup gaming PC uh, for many years to come. So we should have links to everything that we used in this video and Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Other than that, we will see you next time. Bye for now.